Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is me here, my mobs here, and I will be doing my first ever 24 hour review, basically on the show, a 24 hour review. What I do is I play a game that I just got for the first 24 hours, and then after that I go back and I record a review on it, like my thoughts. And today's episode, my first episode, is Kirby Star Allies. Now I got this game yesterday, which is why I'm making a review for it, and yeah, I have Please stuff to say about this game. So the first thing is the box cover. I want to basically talk about the box and the back box cover first. You know, on the front it has Kirby, the logo, the rating, which is E10+, plus, you know, and all these little characters you can collect. Then on the back, it shows you all this legal stuff. And then it shows you stuff like team up and, and combine friend abilities like you can Come on, people. And on the inside, it's kind of like Mar on the inside, it's kind of like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where like you can show where it like kind of shows you the controls of it. And the reason why the cartridge is not in there is because it's in my Switch, and I don't want to remove it that way. I don't want to lose all my data. So that way, I don't have to go. Basically, what I'm saying, not if you like to remove it, you're gonna lose all your save data. Like if you remove it, you're gonna lose like your friends, and you're gonna go combine your friends again, your copy abilities. I don't feel like doing that. Basically what it is, it's like a normal Nintendo Switch cartridge, but the inside is white and it has a Kirby Star Allies logo on it. Of course it's that big. So the first thing is the friend is collecting the friends. It works well, it's a good mechanic. Not all the enemies are compatible, which is kinda of sad, but you know, it's still an amazing addition. Oh, and also, before we continue on, I want to say that this is very personal to me because this is my first Kirby game that I've owned and actually had interest in. My first Kirby game I've ever played was Kirby's Return to Dreamland, but when, Bach, when, when Blockbuster was still thinking about it, I don't have to explain that. If you guys don't know what Blockbuster is, basically it was this video store where you can go rent and stuff like movies, video games, I still have a few games that I've never returned, like Toy Story 3, which is garbage, and a few other games. That I can't return because Blockbuster went out of business a long time ago, so sad. So so sad I can't do that anymore. But you know, freaking whatever. And I so and Kirby Return to Dreamland was the first Kirby game I ever played. I and I had to return it because it was like 2008 when I had it. So yeah. And then all the other Kirby games I just didn't have interest in, and. I didn't know what to do in Kirby's Return Dreamland, so I have absolutely no memory of what I did. But this kind of reminded me a bit like it. A bit. Like a little tiny, tiny bit. Like the health bars and some of the character designs kind of reminded me a little bit of it. I don't know. I can not have the greatest memory. But, you know, it's here in a good little package. I'm just going back up a bit. Hopefully I'm not. I'm still in the shot. It's not covering up my face. Like the bars on top of me are covering the face, you know, like the video bars. Hopefully that ain't covering my face. Hopefully I'm actually in the shot. I wasn't just talking and my body's like over here. It's like I'm talking to a wall. Hopefully I'm in the shot. This I swear recording on tab uh, tablets and phones are so hard to do. But you know, in Kirby Star Ally. So back to the game. Yeah, this is my first game that I actually picked up and I actually own Kirby Star Allies. So yeah, I can actually complete it. Actually, I still have Kirby Return to Dream Line saved on my Wii U data. <laughs> well, Wii U data, because I transferred all my Wii data to Wii U. Because my Wii doesn't work. Now I just call my Wii my Smash, Super Smash Bros. Brawl Machine. Because that's pretty much the only game we could play because Smash Bros. got stuck in it. So, yay. So, yeah. And another thing, now my first main problem with this game is the, um, is sometimes the stupid computers. Like, your computer allies that you can collect, like, after you beat a certain boss, like King Didi or Mana Knight, you can collect them and going into, like, little dream palaces, which you get by pressing switches. I'll talk about the switches and the puzzle pieces and everything later. But if you go into those, you can get a dream lot and there's, like, a little roulette. You press it at the right time, you can get a character you want. You know, Kurt, Man Knight, King Needy, Bandana, Waddle with the little spear, Gooey, all kinds of other characters are in there. Ba but basically, if you collect those characters, you can only get some of those in the Dream Raw 
rot area, which is kind of sad. So, there's like these reset stations in the game. And if you hold Y on them, you can reset everyone, you can collect their powers. Well, except for Mad Knight and King Baby, or some of the other boss characters, because their abilities, they won't be able to change. But they can be able to change, though. Because if you put, if, what I'm saying is, if you hold them in the reset button, they won't go into the reset area. Because you can't claim their abilities. They're just there. You can't make multiple of them. Which is sad, because I want an entire team of Meta Knight, and I want to be a Meta Knight. <laughs> That's sad. But... Dreamers that can dream. So, but they can jump into one and they can turn them into. And since I'm Mad Knight and King Dedede and some of the others are only exclusive to the Dream Palace area, that means after that you have to, you can, you have to beat the level and you have to go back in the Dream Rod area. And the only way to get the Dream Rod back again is you have to complete a stage. So I get Mad Knight back, I have to go beat another stage. Oh no, Mad Knight screw, screwed up and he jumped into someone else. Oh god, now I gotta go get King Needy and I have to fix this. And it's just annoying stupid NPCs. Also, another thing going on the theme of stupid NPCs is that sometimes the NPCs decide to attack enemies that are useful to you. Like if you need to fire enemies, sometimes they'll just go ahead and go boom, boom, fight, kill it. Which is really annoying. It's very annoying. And I don't like that sometimes. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Now some of my favorite things are like these golden platforms where you hold up, all your teammates combine, and you can make all kinds of stuff. A friend circle where you can bounce around it, all your friends in a circle. Friend star, you can get on the star, you can fly. Then you know there's the friend train, which is very not realistic because if you were really on a friend train, Kirby would be dead because he's run bull rushing through walls and concrete. He should have been dead. And then the dream friend bridge where you can make key people walk. Like people with keys, you can make them walk over to like a key area and make them not fall to their death. Fun for the whole family. So, you know, that stuff's fun to do. Now another thing is, even though this is a casual game for casual players, Kirby is like that, some of the secret levels are really hard. And they're sometimes unfair. Like Sector C in the third world, for example. If you play that level, be warned because it's very much BS. Trust me, there is a lot of it. Because what it does is, there are like, there are these some, in the game there are these bus saws that go around in specific areas. Yeah, Sector C is basically bus saw mania. They're, they're everywhere, you can barely dodge them, you try and do something, you get a secret to get a rainbow puzzle piece, oh no, too bad, bus sauce kill you, dead, it's, it's insane, bus sauce my least favorite enemy, it's, so, it all just gets so unfair and so hard, it's not even fun anymore, it's more rage quit inducing, which the main problem with the game, the difficulty spike, in Cuphead, the difficulty spikes, in my opinion, the difficulty spikes with Goopy Legrand, that's a card, and then all the other bosses are like hell. Kind of incarnation, especially. All the later bosses, they get even worse. Stuff like that. That's hard. From the root pack, which was easy, kind of easy, to, you know, everyone else, which is just like hell. Takes like a month to beat one person. It's. Nah. But, you know. This difficulty spike comes out of nowhere, though, because in Cuphead, it gradually builds up. This, where, like, the bosses are easy, then they get a little hard, and they get extremely hard, and they do all this other crap at you, which is not fair, and it's kind of hard, but, you know, Cuphead isn't fair at all. But, you know, but another thing about this game, like, I'm trying to say the difficulty spike in this game is just not fair, like, except... Like, World 1 is easy. World 2 is in the middle of easy, me medium. Like, it's like, it's not easy, but it's not hard. It's medium, intimidate, intimidated, or whatever that word is. And then you go to freaking the third world, Sector C stuff, where bus thoughts coming at you, and it's just unfair. Another thing with this game that is also unfair. Uh, well, actually, okay, I'm gonna talk about the secrets now. The game isn't unfair anymore. 
talk about secrets. Now on the level, there are these real red doors that will take you to secret sections. You go in there, and you can collect puzzle pieces, which we'll talk about later. And then sometimes there are these big switches that you can press, and unlock secret levels, like levels like Sector C. Lovely. But, and doing those requires some specific actions, doing these specific things, stuff like that. Which is lovely. So, basically, what's happened? So basically, if you collect those, you can unlock either a dream palace, which previously mentioned dream rods, characters, stuff like that, and then, you know, the, uh, the secret levels, like Sector C, lovely, again, but those are okay. Now, the puzzle pieces, you collect puzzle pieces in secret areas, or sometimes a rainbow puzzle piece. And you can make a puzzle picture. I only collected one right now. But you can make puzzle pictures with puzzle pieces. And the only way you can outline the little pink parts of some puzzles is by using the rainbow pieces. Now, I'm only 20% in the game. There's, like, more than four worlds, I know. The game already seems like it's overkill. Like, I'm, I'm, like I finished the game, but, of course, I haven't. So, there's a lot more to do. But, yeah. Besides a few minor problems, I will rate Kirby Star Allies maybe a 7.5 out of 10. It's a good, average, great Kirby, good Kirby game. There are some problems that make it bad and some other things. But, you know, for right now, from what I've seen of Kirby Star Allies, it's a good game. It's not a bad game. It's a fun game. I definitely recommend it. It's probably too expensive right now. Just wait a few months. Because, I mean, it came out like two weeks ago. So, yeah. So, thank you guys so much for watching my first ever review. And I see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys!